Until a week ago, if I had asked one of you from, say, Delhi or Karnataka to name a minister from Tamil Nadu, perhaps you would have said Palnivel Tyagarajan or PTR, the former finance minister and current IT minister, or maybe even Udayanidhi Stalin, the son of Chief Minister M.K. Stalin. But now, we Sendil Balaji, a minister without portfolio, who has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in an alleged money laundering case, has joined this list. The image of Sendil Balaji wailing, holding one hand on his chest and another covering his face after his arrest while he was being taken to the hospital has gone viral. Now, who is this Sendil Balaji? He is a politician with about 27 years experience and during this period he has switched five political parties. His first break came in 2006 when he was elected as an MLA on an AADMK ticket. And in five years from there on, when Janalita became Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, she appointed him as the Transport Minister. Sendhil Balaji quickly gained not only Janalita's confidence but also those close to her. So much so that in September 2014, when Janalita was sent to jail, convicted in a corruption case by a special court in Bengaluru, his name was also floated as a probable successor to her. It did not happen, that's another matter, but his influence in the Karoo region grew. And while Janata was in jail, he was seen tonsuring his head and carrying a fire pot in his hand to propitiate the deities for her release. The courts were perhaps pleased. Janata did come out of the case and after a controversial acquittal by the Karnataka High Court, she became Chief Minister again and retained him in the cabinet, but only for two months. After which, following certain complaints, she dropped him. And this is where Sindhil Balaji's troubles began. People who were promised jobs for money in the Metropolitan Transport Corporation in Chennai complained that they were not given appointment letters. The money was paid to conduits of Mr. Sindhil Balaji, they alleged, and said that the money was not returned and neither were the jobs given. The police registered a case. And it was around this time that the DMK stepped up pressure seeking action on Sendhil Balaji. It was a sustained campaign by the DMK. So much so that M.K. Stalin, who was then in the opposition, while campaigning in the 2016 assembly elections in Karur district, where Sendhil Balaji has a stranglehold over the organization, went on to attack him. At that time, Stalin did not have any inkling that three years down the line, he will be campaigning in the same Karur district seeking votes in favor of Sindhil Balaji, who after Janalita's death had moved on to the Amma Makkal Munnetra Kalagam floated by TTV Dinakaran, Sashikala's nephew. But after seeing that the winds were blowing in the direction of the DMK, he joined the party. He quickly gained proximity not just to MK Stalin, but also his family members. The DMK thought that Sindhil Balaji was central to its intent to strengthen the organization in the western region, particularly in Coimbatore, which is a neighboring district of Karur, where the ADMK is considered stronger and the BJP also has a good base in Coimbatore region and its surroundings uh, such as Erode and Tirpur. So, Sendhil Balaji was made in charge of the Karur district and in 2021, after a huge victory in the assembly election where Sendhil Balaji also ensured the defeat of BJP state president Annamalai in Aravakuruchi constituency was made a minister and given the plum portfolios of electricity, excise, prohibition, molasses, all considered cash cows in government parlance. While this happened, within months of Sendhil Balaji's appointment as minister, in an unprecedented action, at least in the last 30 years that I have been watching Tamil Nadu politics, it had never happened where people gathered outside a minister's bungalow, official bungalow, accusing him of irregularities. Hundreds of bar owners gathered outside his house and accused him of irregularities in the grant of licenses for liquor bars, but the government did not take note of it. In fact, Palnivel Tyagarajan as finance minister last year had said that the leakage from the TASMAC system, the TASMAC is, has monopoly over liquor trade in Tamil Nadu, is about 50 percent in form of excise. Last month, there were two whose tragedies in Tamil Nadu in quick succession. More than 20 people died. Two persons who consumed liquor from a TASMAC outlet, a state government owned outlet, died under mysterious circumstances. And yet, Sendhil Balaji, considering his political utility, was not disturbed. That was his clout. What happened in the meanwhile was the cash for jobs scam 
of which he was accused. He had tried to have an out of court settlement. He had managed to repay money to some of the persons who had lodged complaints and even got the Madras High Court to endorse such an arrangement. There was a compromise. But unfortunately for him, the matter went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court disapproved of any sort of compromise between what it said the bribe giver and the bribe taker. It directed that investigation be completed against him. And in the meantime, the enforcement director had also registered a case against him on charges of money laundering, which was closely aligned with the ongoing investigation in the cash for job scandal in the MTC, the Metropolitan Transport Corporation. Again, the High Court gave him a reprieve by ordering de novo or fresh trial against Sandil Balaji. But last month, when this issue went back to the Supreme Court, they said no such arrangement can take place. The Supreme Court asked the investigation officer to go ahead, complete the investigation of the case within two months. And it also gave the green signal for the enforcement directorate to proceed against him. This was a turning point in his career. Income tax officials knocked on the doors of his brother, Ashok Kumar, and acquaintances in Karur and Coimbatore region. That was when Sindhil Balaji's supporters attacked the income tax officers, including a woman officer. She sustained injuries. They were admitted to hospital. Had the enforcement directorate quickly stepped in and conducted searches at Sindhil Balaji's house at that point of time, he would not be the kind of anti-hero that he has become now. He would have been remained a villain. Unfortunately, for reasons best known to the ED, they postponed action against him and instead waited and ill-timed its move. Soon after, Home Minister Amit Shah came to Tamil Nadu on a political mission to strengthen the BJP. He had meetings discussing plans for the parliamentary elections. After he had left Chennai, the enforcement directorate knocked on Sindhil Balaji's doors early in the morning and they also committed the misadventure of going to the state secretariat to conduct searches in this chamber. Now, this is where I say the center miscalculated as was the ED miscalculated because the TMK, unlike the AIDMK, is a powerful political party which has been reiterating its stand on state autonomy, on cooperative federalism. And it was not a party that will take something lying low. The DMK decided that this is its opportunity. It got its allies on board, including the Congress, the left parties, the VCK, MDMK, and turned the tide against the, turned the tables rather, against the central government, accusing it of resorting to vendetta politics by unleashing central agencies such as the Enforcement Directorate. Now, the point here is that the governor of Tamil Nadu, R. N. Ravi, also committed a mistake here rather. A fortnight ago, while the income tax rates were happening and also the Supreme Court had given the green signal for a probe, the governor had written to the chief minister asking that Sindhil Balaji be sacked from the, from the cabinet. Now, it is not the governor's domain to seek such a, make such a demand. It is the CM's prerogative, the chief minister's prerogative to decide who remains in the cabinet and who is out of it. And therefore, it became easier for Mr. Stalin to accuse the Rajbhavan of functioning as an extension of the BJP and indulging in unnecessary vindictiveness that the governor refused to initially refused to reallocate portfolios of Sindhil Balaji to two other ministers added to the whole drama. Eventually, of course, now the portfolios have been reallocated, but Stalin has retained Sindhil Balaji as a minister without portfolio. Now, why did Stalin do this and what happens next is the key question. From Stalin's perspective, he may think that he could use this opportunity to step up the pressure on the center thanks to the support of other political parties and thanks to the fact that the BJP government at the center had indeed used agencies against political opponents more widely than it had done against its own MPs or MLAs who have been facing corruption charges. There was a charge in Karnataka of a 40 percent Sarkara, but we did not see the ED or IT uh, knock at the doors of the politicians there. But here in Tamil Nadu, they have come, they have gone to Delhi, they have gone to other states. We have seen in West Bengal as well. And therefore, Stalin thinks that he can use this and step up the pressure. But what Stalin is somewhere losing is, should he actually go stick his neck out and defend a political turncoat like Sendhil Balaji, in whose political dictionary the word loyalty does not exist? And what does he gain from this? It will be a momentary gain while posturing as a state versus posturing this as a state uh, versus center issue. But the enforcement directorate can go to the court and inform that since the ruling party is backing Sindhil Balaji, since he is in hospital awaiting a coronary bypass surgery, 
and ministers have visited him at regular intervals. The possibility of a fair investigation may not be possible and therefore they may say that he needs to be interrogated in Delhi and eventually even demand that he may be remanded to the Tihar prison there. It has happened in the past as we have seen. So this is a possibility. The other thing that could embarrass the government as well as Stalin who wants a clean image for himself is this that the Supreme Court last month while setting a two month deadline to the investigators to proceed against Sindhil Balaji, the crime branch had also kept the option of constituting a special investigating team open. If the Supreme Court is convinced that the atmosphere in Tamil Nadu is not conducive for a fair and for a free probe against Sindhil Balaji by the Central Crime Branch, then it could also constitute a SIT and appoint an officer of its will. That will be real embarrassment for the Tamil Nadu government. In the past, if you have noticed, even Karnanadi, Mr. Stalin's father, a veteran, had dropped ministers against whom there were complaints. Jailda too, despite facing corruption charges herself, did not brook charges against her ministers, did not take it kindly. In fact, uh, once a minister's husband was accused of a murder and she dropped the minister concerned. She had also dropped Agri Krishnamurti when he faced similar corruption charges during her regime. Therefore, it would be prudent for Stalin to let go of Sindhil Balaji for the time being and reinstate him perhaps later, maybe when the police completes its probe and when he gets bail in the ED case. For more such videos, please log on and subscribe to the Hindu. Thank you.